these two machines are running. I have configured the performance counters for these. Okay, so ideally the scenario would be, um, I wanted to get alert when there is a CP utilization is greater than 90 percent mm -hmm. All right, so I we are supposed to actually use the logic I mean, this one. Um, uh, backup uh, backup jobs, but you know the setup is not ready. So I've configured the performance counters. The performance counters are sent to Log Analytics workspace. This is the Log Analytics workspace, and you can see all this counters data available. So what we'll do is we'll try to get this data in the email, okay, through with the help of logic apps, okay. So for that I've created a you know logic app for testing. I have not created any designer yet because I wanted to show you. This is the test logic app that I have. So I'll go to the designer. This is the easy method. Don't go for a code view. And uh, because it's a purely on the JSON format, but you will be confused. Always easy to go to designer view. Let's click on the new long blank logic app. So as usual, we'll uh, look for the schedule first. In the schedule, I'll uh, open the recurrence. Um, let's say every one day, okay? In the next step, I'm going to search for the log analytics workspace. So you see Azure monitor logs, just click on this. Now what we need to do is we need to click on this run query and list results. Okay, we need to sign in with the default directory. They failed uh, with the error. The browser is closed. Please sign in again. Um, let me do one thing. Let me log in here. Otherwise, you know, what I'll do is I'll uh, do this clear cache sheet stuff. And so this is the easiest method to do it. Is the subscription 29 disabled, Kamal? Um, it might have disabled. Um, I have created another one because uh, if I start doing the lab, right, what happens is um, by the time we come under the call, it might be okay. disabled. So for a safer mm -hmm. side, I have uh, used this. Okay, sure. So it's MCD 30 and uh, one simple at one, two, three, the password. Same password. Now let me try this. Okay, good. So now it has come. So I'm selecting the subscription and selecting the resource group where my log analytics workspace exists. And uh, resource type would be log analytics workspace. And the resource name is my workspace. And the query which I'm going to use this. 
where it will get the perf counters. Time range, um, let's say last 24 hours, okay? So then click next step. Okay, in the next step, let us convert this result into a table, okay? So just look for the table. There is something called uh, data operations. In the data operation, we need to click on create HTML table. Okay. Here we need to say from where we need the data. So value, right? From here we get a value. And you can see from this output, right? What are the values? What is the what are the values you are going to get? You can see here. You're going to get time generated, computer, object name, computer name, counter name, and uh, counter value. So these values are coming from this previous output, okay? What I want to do is I wanted to add a value, okay? Whatever the value it is coming here, I wanted to convert them to a table. Then what I want to do is I wanted to send an email. So there is something called Office 365 Outlook. Uh, let me see if there is anything else. Um, I think we have Outlook.com as well. Okay, let me select this. Uh, send email. Let's select for look for this send email. Send email. Okay, we need to sign into Outlook first. Same, we'll use the same one, one simple at one, two, three. Okay, it's creating a connection. Now, whom I should send an email, okay? Um, let's say my another email, okay? And uh, per foot data of virtual machine, here I wanted to add the VM name, okay? That's a computer. And you see when I say computer, it has created a loop because there are multiple computers. For each computer, it is going to send an email. Hello team, please find the for data for uh, prod environment okay just just giving an example okay then how do you get the data how do you add the data so the data is there where it is in the table right so if you come here you see create html table also there right click on this click on the output so the output will be available here Okay, so when you have a loop, right? So what we need to do is go into the settings, uh, not settings. So this is the one, cancel. Okay, not here. Okay, here we have to settings and we have to add this and this should be one parallelism so that it will not send uh, multiple emails it will only send emails for each vm okay i'm saving this before that let me do one thing let me authenticate here because i cannot send an email uh, initially i have to first send a test email because this is newly created. Okay, test. Good, so now it will work.
wait and day. I need to add this. Huh? Because it will block the email communications. If I don't uh, validate this. Okay. So now let's do one thing. Since we have this, um, it is going to trigger every one day, right? So let me trigger manually. So it will tell us if there are any errors as well. So it is sending it, you see, there are 2,665 emails it is going to send me now. Oh my God, I, there is no way to stop it. So first let me- How come 2,665? Yeah, that's where I'm thinking. Maybe I don't know how the data was, uh, okay. Uh, because I think uh, the values are more, I believe. That's why it is. And uh, there's no way to cancel this. Values was. When it's a values, when you run this perf counter, right? Let's say. Yeah. Uh, okay, the output uh, was right, more right, than right, one. Correct, row. correct. So, but we have already given a, a number uh, one there, right? Parallelism is one, okay? For each uh, one, right? It is going to send yeah. one email. I mean, like server wise, it will send an email, but each mm -hmm. server has more uh, values. So it happens for initial testing. <laughs> um, I used to get around thousands of email when I was learning this before while implementing in my environment. I mean, there's a live example. Actually, I've seen this with uh, one of the customers. Mm -hmm. like every day, flooding 5,000 plus emails. Yeah. Notifications, yeah. <sighs> gone <laughs> today i'm gone <laughs> too many emails and um, just wanted to, i just wanted to ensure that it is only giving csvm data you see right for a vm basis it's not giving the data for other vm that's fine maybe we can still further improve this uh, it is sending for all, but why it is sending more is the question here. Okay, but at least you know, right? Uh, I'm sorry. Is the data any different from one mail to other? No, there's no difference. Um, this is. Sixteen. It's the same, right? Same, same data. Okay, let me go to... Here is Can you check the recurrence? That's correct only, but only the, I need to just remove this. Uh, okay, so what we're doing is uh, for each uh, counter, each row, okay, wherever you see VN, right, it is uh, sending an email. So this is static, it will not change because uh, whatever the data is there in the bar, uh, it's going to have the same thing. So we need to add some more logics where it is going to only provide um one vm data okay and not all so if i say that if i add a vm name here right in the here right one vm only that vm data has to be presented here okay 
but what you will see here is i think it's uh, data for all because the data is static here whatever the data you're creating here right it is coming from there so this needs for further improvements uh, right we may need to put a variable and uh, uh, create like that okay so let me go to this run history once okay there's too much data so that's why i think so maybe i need to put last uh, 5 minute 5 minutes or 10 minutes that's why it is sending more and i'll keep on receiving this cancel the run cancel the run okay i think it will at least it will stop the emails and what i'll do is i'll just uh, disable this uh disable this so that i'll not be <laughs> getting so many emails okay so this is about the logic app uh, right so i mean this is just a sample right there will be a lot of various use cases in the real time right and um, everything that you can start with is a blank designer and first you need to write your workflow and based on that you have to create and you will see a lot of challenges like this you will have to go through a lot of emails um, a lot of things you need to plan the testing accordingly okay so that uh, you will not see such issues okay any questions so far on the logic apps oh. is there a way to debug it before you actually uh... run it and uh, there's no way to de debug it so you have to run there's no other way in the sense you you run the app step by step and see the output no 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 that is i don't see no. that even i work with microsoft for few scenarios every time we used to run this when you run this you can go to this um, run history and this is where you will see what is the payload and what is the how, how it is actually getting the output right so right now this is more data you are not able to see here but ideally you will be able to see and uh, there will be a lot of things that we do um, here right like parse json like instead of you know getting like these right this can be further improved very well okay we as a infra guys i mean not having much expertise on this okay will be the developers who actually having coding experience right. and also they do bet better people like me right so i need a lot of testing and um, a lot of struggles to understand and uh, implement it somehow i did it in my environment but this ideally it's not into azure administrator scope it should go to automation engineer or you know developer all right can we uh, go to the code view code view okay yeah same thing whatever you have there but it will be under the code you see for each and all the values right so now if you were to uh, deploy this in prod right so how do you know i mean of course other than you know manually scanning this how do you know what things you'll have to change before you deploy this to prod yeah you need to test in the test right let's say this is a test environment you have to test the code hmm and if mm -hmm. we think this is a perfectly fine this code is fine you can just clone this it's a clone option you can just okay. uh, create a new logic app so that uh, you'll have the same code available in the target as well otherwise you can just copy this code view okay C control a mm -hmm. and uh, control c then uh, uh, when you create a new logic app just go to code view and uh, update the same thing only thing is the connections etc it will uh, you will see challenges yeah you have to you have to, to manually change those right yeah better to clone this instead of updating mm. this code but clone it is just showing the resource group right i mean change of resource group only uh no not even resource group it is the same resource group you have to deploy 
and uh, provide a name. Right, but my 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 resources, I mean, broad resources won't be in the same resource. Yeah, right? and then maybe the easiest way is to copy this and see if that works. I see a few challenges in the past because the mm. connections and uh, you know permission that we use for the prod is different. So what you can do is you, you can copy schema and everything is same, right? These values are same. When you go to the connections, that is where I think you need to change this, okay? So this I mean, for example, you, let's say your, um, would log analytics be different in prod? Which one? Log analytics workspace that you're using. Yeah, yeah, it will be different. Maybe it will be different or may not be, right? For test, you may have test uh, workspace. That's fine. So what you can do is you have to configure manually, right? So you create another one. And in the steps, you have to use a second different uh, workspace. Then you have to create another step like this. You have to do manually. Okay. All right. So let me start this VMs first.